So welcome back to the final instalment of our DIY summer house build. This week I'm going to show you how we built the door, added the roof with felt, the trim and a little bit of the double patio which you'll see why shortly. Anyway, keep on watching if you want to see how we did it. We then slot the plastic windows in, made sure they were level and screwed it to the shed framework. If you didn't catch my double glazing video a few months back, I'll leave a link to that video below. But this one already had the glass panel still left in, but we'll add glass panels to the other ones later. Now you might notice that one of the roof sections was on top of the shed, but we decided later to felt it all at ground level. There's a big difference in weight by the time the felt's on. And I nailed strips of OSB down to the framework. and rolled out strips of tiled effect felt. You'll see a lot more of this felt in some very exciting upcoming videos. And after clout nailing the first strips edge down, we nailed it around the side. But this is where I learned that I'd apparently nailed the felt corners down wrong in my wick shed video. He said, you're not meant to slice it, and that I should have done a blanket fold with no cutting and nailing down. Then I'd make a mark with a hammer where to overlap the felt, match up the pattern, and run a line of bitumen adhesive where the lines start and then a zigzag and overlap the next felt and do a fancy foot shuffle. So more clout nails went across And after nailing down the opposite end, we repeated using the adhesive with the other overlap section. but didn't add the final piece until it was on top of the roof to overlap while it was in situ. And after the roof went on, I screwed the two middle framework pieces together and screwed the roof's frame through to the cladding, which then poked through to the other side of the frame. And while I did that, my dad's on the roof to stick down and overlap that final piece of felt. And after more clout nails, he trimmed off the excess. Now the glass panels finally went in. But because we couldn't find our special plastic glazing hammer, my dad's using a rubber handle on a regular one. Now I think we're on day four 
and we're about to make the side door which I think this framework was already built down my dad's wood yard. However, I'll explore this in more detail in my upcoming lean to shed video. But to get his measurements, he always makes sure he ends with a 15 mil clearance around the width of the door. Then you've got your flashings, which are trims on either side and then the framework. So you've seen it before, we're checking if it's square. 191 centimetres. 191, yeah. And now we'll be adding a cross brace to prevent it from sagging. Remember, the bottom brace should be towards the hinge side at the bottom, and we'll be cladding it on top. Then using a straight edge, I place it on top of where we needed to cut it, lined it up with the framework, and drew along it. Then I could cut where my pencil marks were with a mitre saw so they'd be able to slot straight in. And yes, you can see in the background the bungalows had a conservatory installed and an external power point which later that day got swapped for a hidden cable to the summer house. And once I slotted the braces in, I screwed it to the frame. And for the first piece of cladding, I added screws on them. And for every piece, I made sure the top was the same height as the frame. But the ones in between I'd nailed down. I don't think the nail gun was here that day. But made sure there was a screw in each one going along the brace. And also remember that the length of the cladding needs to have the same overhang as the rest of the summer house. And the final piece had screws in it as well. Now I'm adding the trim, which my dad also calls flashing. And no, that's not split wood, it's a knot. Although it did look like it while I was editing. And I screwed that down along the side. But we needed to match it to the same thickness as the cladding. So I'm hand sawing a notch out of it, which I also had to repeat on the opposite side. Then I treated it, screwed down some hinges, making sure the spars were directly underneath. If you want a closer look on how I did this, then I highly recommend watching the narrow gate video that I shared a couple of months back and a bolt for security. Again, making sure the screws are going into the frame behind. And for those wondering, yes, I will definitely be adding some bolts later my dad also added flashings on the shed framework itself and then we lined up the door and I screwed the hinges on and the matching bolt piece. Then we needed to focus on the roof felt trim. And we're just using cladding for this and I cut four pieces down at the same time and treated them. And we screwed these across the front and the back in sections. Although I didn't show the back because I'm a scaredy cat for heights. So I left that bit to my dad while I helped from the lowest side stood on step ladders. And something I wasn't able to get on camera as I wasn't there was fitting the double doors. But I can tell you once he'd screwed it in, there's an Allen key behind the hinge covers where you can adjust it and after making some 45 degree mitre cuts, I added some trim around the windows and the door, but I'll still need to seal these later once I've sanded off the branding on the finished side and treated again, which I still haven't done, so I've got to get that sorted very soon. And finally, for the electrics, our electrician is delegating to me to wire up a double socket because he's taught me how to do that recently, wire up the fuse box, and the light switch. He's also set up a separate switch in the house so the electrics can be turned off away from there. So hopefully that was really useful and I know one of the questions that kept popping up more frequently was how much did this cost to build? Well if you 
include all the materials with the windows, it was about £960 because we got them X display. But if you wanted to go out and buy something ready built and fitted, it would probably cost about £1,700 or more. This is a 16 foot by 8 foot shed. Anyway, hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll show you how we did the lean-to shed as well. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye! No one can say I missed a bit. <laughs>